We're going to look at how in Fregato we can use the level editor to to edit a level. Here I'm, I've got a game of Fregato going uh, and I decide I want to use the editor. All I have to do is press Control and E and it enters the editor and, and brings up the, the, the level in the editor that we were just playing. We can see the grid lines showing the division into tiles and we can scroll all around the level easily. We can also uh, zoom in and out uh, using using this menu, uh, or also using the convenient hotkeys. One, once we zoom out, we see the background disappears, and we can zoom right out to see the level from a very uh, from very far away and, and get the picture of the whole level. We can also uh, edit any of the tiles in the level very easily. We can pick pick a tile that we're using. So I, I use this pick tool, uh, and then I, I pick these tiles and we see that the tile is selected here. Now we can add tiles uh, using this add tool where we draw a rectangle and it will fill that rectangle with that kind of tile. So we could say up here we could we could draw that kind of tile. Uh, and then using right click we can delete uh, areas of tiles. Also uh, <coughs> so here I I, I use the right click to, to delete it. Uh, we can also select areas of tiles if we want using the select tool and then just press delete and then it will delete those tiles. Uh, we can and then when we're done we can very easily just save the level uh, and then we press escape to go back into the game and we're back in the game playing the, the modified version of the level. We can likewise of course modify any of the objects on the level we can say Select an object, select an ant, move them around somewhere else. Um, we can add a new enemy, so we can, um, or say we can move, move the player. So we could decide that we don't want the player to be to be in his current position and try to make him instead. And then we could add a new enemy, so like this, and start the player right next to an enemy, which probably wouldn't be very fun in an actual game. And there we go. But ne next I'll show how we might actually start making a level from scratch. So if we want to make a new level, we go to File, New, and we'll make a level, we'll just call it test.cfg. And then we start completely on the screen. We see if we scroll around that there's a white border around, and we can zoom out and we can see. Uh, we can see this whiteboard. This is the boundaries of the level. So we start off with a very, very small level. So probably the first thing we want to do is decide upon a reasonable size for our level, and then we can um, we can go and extend the boundaries of the level to to something reasonable based on what we're expecting to make. And zoom back in, and then let's get some rocks and draw some rocks to start us off with, and let's draw. Add an object. We'll add uh, the frog in, and then we can save this. And let's see that this works, just to give us a starting point. So then we have a simple, basic level. Now, going back into our editor, suppose we wanted to add a background. There are a number of backgrounds that are prepackaged with the game, and so World One is probably an appropriate background to use. Um, and when we do this and then it only shows that the maximum zoom level we can see we now have a nice background for our level. Next we can add some more tiles so we can make our level more interesting very easily. Um, using the rectangular draw tool I can add a whole bunch of platforms and we can see that when we draw a rectangle full of tiles it very nicely lays out the tiles to look uh, to look all pretty. So all the effort of trying to make a bunch of tiles look nice together is already done by the game engine. We don't have to do that. We can, of course, we have bare rocks. Say we wanted to add some grass. Uh, we could add, say, some of these grass tiles. So I'll add a patch of grass right here. And then I might want to add another patch, say, on top of this rocky outcliff. And so now let's just try this. We save it. We enter the game again. We run around. <clears throat> now, of course, we might want to add some enemies. So let's go back into the editor. And so far, we've been adding tiles to the level. So a bunch of things like rocks um, are considered tiles. 
uh, enemies however are considered objects so we go to this add objects tool and then we go down to let's add some ants so they're under bugs and we'll add an ant there and you can see that we've added him now if we mouse over him uh, an actual ant comes onto the screen and starts walking around which allows us to easily see how that how that object will actually behave when the level is is in motion um, so this gives us a quick preview so we can see if the object is 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 turning at the right time if it's behaving as we expect uh, and then when we take the mouse off that that object just disappears so we can add a couple of ants here now ants are fairly simple um, simple objects, so you just put them down and they just behave uh, behave naturally. But say here we wanted a platform that Fregato was going to jump on. Um, platforms are over in the level section, um, so we'll add a simple wood platform. And this platform, uh, we can actually click on it and it has what are called properties, which control how it behaves. By default, the platform just stays completely still. But these red lines allow us to control its movement range. So we can say, hey, we want this platform to move horizontally, and we can give it guides for where it should move between. And then when we mouse over it, it'll show us how the how the platform's going to behave when it's actually in the level. So we can see it moves left and right now because we moved the guides. Now, that platform, maybe it's moving a little slow for us, over, he over here on the side we have movement speed so we can decide we want to make it a little faster or if we were a little crazy we could decide we wanted to make it really really fast and it would zoom back and forth like that. Likewise we can of course add a platform that moves vertically so we'll add this platform and we'll make it move vertically and then we can also see how it's, how it's actually going to behave by just mousing over it. <clears throat> so as, as we can see, we can have fairly sophisticated control over how objects move in the game. Likewise, there's also uh, what we call controller objects, which which add sort of, these are kind of the special effects controllers. They're not an actual physical object that exists in the game, but rather they control different kinds of physical uh, effects. Now one of these is called the water controller. What the water controller does is it causes there to be an area in the game that's filled with water. So we put one down and then we select it and then it will actually show us, uh, it, it's got this rectangle here uh, delineated by these lines is an area that's going to be filled with water. So say we expand it here, we can see that this area uh, delineated by this rectangle is going to be filled with water. Now of course we, we're responsible for putting tiles around it to make the water appear nice. So let's do that now where we'll actually get some rocks and we'll draw rocks around the water so that we have a basin for the the water to go in. Zoom out there. Cross marks there. Cross marks there. And now the uh, when the game starts, we'll see that there's actually going to be water in there where where we drew. So I'll save that level. I'll go. I'll get hurt by that ant. And then. We can see that we have our nice platforms moving as we expect, and we have our area of water that we added. If we go back into our editor, we can see that there are a number of of different controllers um, that that do different things. There's one that will generate smoke for us, for instance, um, that we can put down, and we can see in the preview that it actually makes smoke. So that would be useful, for instance, to put at the top of the chimney. Um, in, in our house to make smoke for us. And then we can easily just delete anything by selecting and deleting. So as we can see the Fregato uh, editor is, is quite sophisticated. It allows us to easily add, delete, move things. We can also do things like uh, we can select a bunch of objects at the same time. So we could say select these two ants and we can move them together to a new location. Uh, and likewise we can we can actually select a whole bunch of tiles 
um, and then move those tiles all at once. So we could select all those tiles, and we could move them all the way up like this. And then if we don't like something we've done, we can just undo it. We just press U, and it will undo the command. And then R to redo. And uh, the editor has an unlimited 